If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf. A friend of mine uh, asked me a question the other day. Shout out to you, Jason. About uh, how do you get into writing for Magic the Gathering? And my answer, um, I'm going to say, applies more or less to writing in general for websites. But I'm going to be talking in the context of Magic the Gathering. Now, I used to write for Dragonstar Hobbies website. Um, and they have since taken down all the articles that weren't written by one of the co-owners. But I think you can look on, how does that work with Google Cache, is that it? Uh, you, where you can pull up older versions of websites. I think you can still find, I don't know how that works, but anyway. Um, yeah, so the way that I did it, uh, to the extent that I did, is, you know, there's, first of all, just ask if you can. That sounds kind of simple, and actually that should be one of the later steps, but sometimes, especially if you're already really plugged into your LGS and they're looking for content for their website, then just ask and see if they will. Um, you gotta start somewhere, right? The more typical, and that's, that's usually one of the later steps, but if you can get you're writing for a game store, for an LGS, that makes it easier to write for larger websites and larger game stores and so on and so forth. The more typical route is start off with your own writing. If you have your own website or start your own blog, then get to writing on that. Just, you're not going to be writing for any real money. <laughs> not really. Uh, you can put up some Google AdSense, you know, some ads and make some money through Google. Um, just the same way that anyone with their own website can. But other than that, you won't be making much. What you're doing essentially is you're writing out your resume so that when you try to apply to, you know, write for, I don't know, Gathering Magic or Channel Fireball or whatnot, they have a, a record of your previous writings and they can look and see, you know, okay, make sure, you know, he they make sure that their grammar is good and they make some good points about the game and this lines up with what the pros think so they must be onto something or this is radically different I wonder why you know whatever the case may be they have something they don't just have to take your word for it um, the next thing is definitely make sure that at the very least you have someone proofread your work if not then look through a, a program like Grammarly and make sure that they proof everything that you write um, that's a that's a good service. I don't write nearly as much as I used to, but I still like to use a service like that. Um, and even I, I was an English major, and I'll still go to other people, because there's some things that you just won't see very well on your own. Your mind just inserts what you meant to say, rather than what you actually said. Um, the next thing is read up on some classic articles, some classic studies, like the first one that comes to mind for me is Who's the Beatdown? That's a, that's a foundational work in Magic the Gathering writing. When there are two similar decks playing against one another, or even different decks, but usually this comes up most in the context of similar decks, which one needs to be the aggressor and which one needs to be the control player? Uh, so for example, when I'm playing Infect, Simic Infect, let's say, against a burn player, that burn player needs to realize that they're the control player in the match. Their job is to keep me off of what few creatures I do have and make sure that I, I can't stick anything. And if they do, if they can do that job well, it doesn't matter. The, the gates are now open for them. They'll win eventually. They're inevitable. If they start being hyper-aggressive and tapping out on every turn and not keeping up their instant speed removal, that makes it easier for Infect. Uh, likewise, in a, a red mirror, where one player is a burn player and the other is red deck wins, uh, a not so burn spell oriented strategy, well then it, it changes a little bit. The player that has the more control elements needs to use them for the purpose of control. They have a lot of creatures, bolt their creatures and keep them off of the early kill, for instance. That's a classic. 
example. And there, there are other articles like it that you absolutely should re read up. Uh, go to Channel Fireball, look at individual players' blogs, um, Big Gathering Magic, and you know, make sure that you're well versed. Uh, TCG Player also has a lot of good articles, etc. Um, if you're like me and you don't write as much, but you vlog, <laughs> you do uh, videos like these, make sure that you craft those as best you can as if you were writing. That means scripting, for instance. Now, on a video like this, because I don't have much time with Evangeline, I don't script them as much. There's not a script in front of me as I'm talking. But if you see me talk and it's not actual me in front of the camera, you can be sure that there's a script. Because I don't want to make mistakes, I don't want long pauses, I don't want to um, say um, a lot. <laughs> you get the idea. Try to speak as if you're writing. Try to be that professional. Um, and it, one advantage to what I do is that I have a few connections, <laughs> not many, I'm not that big, but I have a few connections with pro or semi-pro players, or just other, uh, I, don't, I don't want, influencers, I guess, in the Magic the Gathering community. Um, so there's, there's no way to say this without Okay, I'll, I'll give this one, because this is actually on my channel already. Uh, Travis Wu. I have uh, featured a deck of his on my channel. And the reason is because he and I are both magic YouTubers, and we both you know, like to make homebrews, and he, ha he said, hey look, I have an artifact-based infect deck. Would you mind if I put it up? I said, that sounds great. Um, and we still haven't returned the favor just yet. Um, I hope to, before too long, get a deck of mine on his channel. But that sort of connection, sometimes they occur just naturally. You'll, um, you'll just happen to find each other's channel, comment, and they'll respond to you and it goes from there. That's what happened with uh, me and Mr. Wu. Mr. Wu, I'm not sure he would take to that too well, but no, much respect man, much love. I love you dude. Um, but sometimes you'll go to a convention, or a Grand Prix, or depending on where you live, you might just go to a PPTQ or a PTQ, and you'll find them, and you'll get to talk to them there. That's another way. Um, so, for example, when I met Tom Ross, who, by the way, legit the nicest magic professional I have ever had the pleasure of actually having a conversation with. Um, there may be nicer players. Reed Duke has that reputation, but I've seen Mr. Duke. I've never actually gotten into a deep conversation with him. It's hey. Um, but Tom Ross was so nice that he looked over my Legacy Bug Infect deck, and we had a short conversation. This was after he beat Ruben Bressler at uh, the SCG Open we were at. I, was, I just stuck around to the end of the round, and he was nice enough to take a look at my Infect deck. Um, and I don't even know that he remembers me, but that was, that was kind of cool, I think. Uh, there's a reason why I made when I'm the boss. He deserves it. He's a good guy. Connections. Connections. And don't write like that. Don't get too off topic. <laughs> Little sub tip, sub point there for you. Free advice. All right. And that's it for now. T1 Baby Bear, do you want to say goodbye to everyone? Do you want to say bye-bye? Oh, no, we're sleepy still. She's attached, she's kind of attached to me. Okay. We're just gonna, we're gonna go to the hammock, and we're gonna take a little bit of a nap, or at least play or something. Did you like the hammock? All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you have any other tips, then feel more than free to leave them in the comments below. Even if you don't manage to get a writing job with a larger website, if you have your own blog and you get enough traffic, and your ads 
make enough through AdSense, that might just be you know, the end in and of itself. It's something you don't have to put too, too much time to, at least not if you write the way that I do. I don't, you know, write 40 articles a week, um, but it certainly helps. Um, it's supplementary income, potentially, if you write well enough and get enough traffic. Um, boost your post, not boost necessarily, that, uh, what I mean is share through Facebook, through Twitter, through whatever you have that you are writing. Um, and at some point I would like to feature, oh yeah, channel announcement by the way, really quick channel announcement. I would like to feature a Magic the Gathering writer on my channel that is unknown. So sorry Craig Wesco, you're an awesome dude. Not you. you everyone knows who you are, right? Someone who doesn't have that sort of notoriety already that I can bring to the fore. And I'll be talking about that. I'll be uh, making an announcement about some uh, some rules and guidelines for submitting. But this also gives you some time to sort of build up your website to uh, write some articles. This won't be happening tomorrow. Don't worry. But you, know, you have a chance to uh, get set up before we start. All right. Take care, everyone. We will see you later. Evangeline Stevens? Evangeline Rosalind Stevens, would you like to say bye-bye? Or would you like to look at whatever made that sound? Come here, and turn your head. <gasps> oh, it's you! It's you! Say bye-bye. <laughs>